like, you're not that good, but you look pretty, so we're going to give you money. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> they said, to keep your funding, all you've got to do is meddle at Europeans. They sat me down. I was in a meeting. Two of the head guys at British Athletics, they were like, we don't care about time in October, whatever. They sat me down again. They were like, oh, yeah, you're not on funding next year. I was like, oh. I was like, but all you said I needed to do was get a medal. Yeah, now we don't want medals, we want times. Went home, got my two hour bus home, and um, got back to my foster care. I was like, ah, oh, I've been invited to race for Bristol, my first ever race on Sunday. Um, I need some running spikes. They're like, mm. they're like, ah, oh, what a mate, um, we're not buying them for you. I was like, ah, oh, bro, okay. They're like, ask social services or something, because we ain't got the money for that. I was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, oh, I was like, Adam, I would, I would add you on Facebook, but I don't add my competitors or something like that. <laughs> I was like, you're a rival, you're not a friend, do you know what I mean? I'm straight to the point, so mm. I'm not looking to suck any toes for some, for some spikes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. What's going on, guys? I hope you're all safe and keeping well. Uh, we are back with another episode of Athletics Productions, uh, which is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So when you get a minute, check out some of our previous work as you're going to check out this one as well. I know you're going to check out this one as well. Um, today, I'm joined by my co-host, Victor, and Mr. Leon Reed. Please. Fastest Irishman yeah, going right now. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? It would be ever, but they haven't given me the title yet. Seriously, yeah. What's what's the yeah? What's the old job? Was it the wind gauge? No, it's the um. The record is twenty thirty, and I'm around twenty seven. But it was like two weeks before that allegiance change. So then, we'll get to that because I know that I know that was quite a uh, that was quite a long process for you. Yeah, Um, it was. How how were you coping with the lockdown? Because obviously, you was um. For those who don't know, he was training out in South Africa. Um, getting in a nice block of training and then this happened so talk to us man yeah no I'm been, I've been alright actually I've been out and about I've been like um, since the lockdown obviously we can't go to the gym and that but I've managed to like buy some dumbbells mm. and my friend's got a gym that he lets me go in so I'm able to do some stuff obviously not everything but how much did the dumbbells cost because I saw them go right. for some crazy <laughs> prices <laughs> <laughs> I've got the, the 25s as well, the 25s, they're heavy, I'm not even that big, they're heavy, oh, I can't even do much of them, I'm like that, doing chest, I'm like, get the 25s, it'll be worth it, <laughs> struggling, <laughs> you know, you just want to do a little, a little, uh, I'm don't like, worry oh. man, don't worry, oh, no, I'm me, up here. I, I know what it's like, <laughs> when I'm in the gym, sometimes I'm looking around like, I don't want to lift too much, because I ain't trying to ask no yeah, trust me, <laughs> 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 bars on your neck, <laughs> Guys, guys, please. Yeah. Like, listen, honestly, I've seen some people in my gym and you know when you see them racking it up and then you just look and you think, I'm not judging, but I'm yeah. very certain that you can't lift that. Have you got the facilities for that big man? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally like that sometimes. And, and it's pure gym as well. So like during the week when I'm, I'm there, I see... Jokes. I see some of the road men coming that I used to see like during school and stuff. Yeah. And and I see them and I'm just like, what are you really doing here? Because they come in thinking, I ain't seen you here before. And they're just slapping on plates. And I'm like, mm. you are not that strong. Yeah. Behave yourself. Behave. You'll learn a lesson quick. Road man gym. You don't need to be there. <laughs> just come Literally. once, innit? <laughs> listen, road man gym. Listen, being a road man, it has its perks because I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you i'm pretty sure that's where some people started track from just constantly running <laughs> running <laughs> and they ended up getting fast but um yeah how's it how apart from you know having the dumbbells at home and then um as you said your friend has the gym that he's allowing you to use like how are you keeping up with your track work and stuff especially uh, now not... go on sorry go on. no i was gonna say especially now because um obviously we're out of winter training so the long runs aren't the long ones are still there to an extent, but you'd mainly be doing quick stuff. So how are you um, supplementing those at this time? Well, luckily when I was in um, South Africa, we were doing stuff on the grass anyway. 
Yeah. So since it was locked down, mm-hmm. since I came back, I've been on the grass pretty much all the time. And then I was able to get on one track and then they kicked us off it, even because it was like, owned by the someone or something. So they kicked us off. Owned by um, someone in, who, who lives in the area. Yeah, who doesn't use it or just likes looking at it. Yeah, well, so. you never know, you might be trying to build out another house on there at some point in time. Yeah, probably. It's a new track though, so it's just like, I don't know. Okay. So has your program has your program really really been been changed? Obviously, the gym stuff definitely changed, but track stuff track wise, change of surface. Are you doing more heel work? Yeah, tempos? a lot more heel work. A lot more everything. Everything's at about eighty percent at the moment. Because it's yeah, not I can imagine on grass as well. Injury. My yeah. first session on grass, yeah, I nearly stabbed my ankles because you don't you don't understand Are what you've you got on the yeah, track. Yeah. <laughs> so you go on grass and you're just like whoop what's, that's the what thing so like, when I got back I was doing like long runs I was like 5k easy come on then hill runs easy on the grass I stepped on the track and did two 120s I was like <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> something about there's something about the surface that right, just it's... does a madness with either your brain or your your body in general because Literally. I went to do I done a, a road run. I think I done about three k. I was just taking it easy, and I went to do it in the park. I took one lap of the football pitch and said, "Nope, not doing this." <laughs> went on the road, and then it was fine. And then I just kept going, just mm-hmm. kept running and running. I was like, "There is no way I would have run this long had yeah. I stayed on the grass." Because it, it just feels absorbed so taxing, so soft, and it's just it's just more effort to, rather than just being like it's more like. Maybe I should have put on some boots. It might have been better. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of just wearing some, 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 any Nike training trainers, you know mm. what I mean? But, um, so I don't know if you've seen some of our previous podcasts, but we always like to do a, a part where we go back and speak about how you came into the sport. Um, from quickly going over your power of 10, you kind of started quite late. What, cause from what we, from what I can see, it's well, 15, 16, cause you were second year under 17. Mm. Whereas of some of the guys in your age group who who you would have been with at the time had probably been doing the sport for a few years. David Bollerimba. Uh, well, there you go. That's that's, that's one <laughs> the, person. I know he was the, doing it for a while. The Mecca. He was the boy. The boy. How how was it like coming in? Because we I'm get I'm assuming you were the the fast kid in school, um, and then he was kind of like, okay, cool. Let me try. Oh yeah, Leon, you'd be pretty good at athletics. Maybe you should go down to the local track and 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 try it out. Um, what was that like? Like doing that tra- whole transition from school to what, being was, an athlete. It was literally just like one day I was in. I think I was in science or something, and we had computers. And then I, mm. it was like a free period or something. It was like we've done exams or something. And then I was like, oh, someone mentioned that like, athletics, and I typed in like Bristol Athletics. Mm. And it was like, first off, let X come and run, whatever. We train Tuesdays and Thursdays. And I think it was Tuesday at the time. Yeah. And then um, there's a guy called Hillary. So I turned up to the track, uh, this beat down track. And I'm <laughs> like in like full Arsenal gear, like shorts. Do you know what I mean? Like just normal trainers. Your Arsenal and support, was, yeah? Yeah, man. Of course. My, um, my, auntie <laughs> used to live, my auntie used to live in a high rise and you could see into Highbury. You could see one of oh, the girls in hybrid. Yeah, she lived on like level 100 or something. And you could see. That's so, bad. Damn. Yeah. So, no need for then. tickets then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see one half and then you watch the other half on TV. On TV, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally. But, um, but yeah, I literally signed myself up on like, on the Tuesday and I got an email back and he was like, this is like when it was like pure just email, MSN, Bebo. Mm. He was like, he was like Bebo. Um, come on, come on Thursday. And I was like, all right, cool. And my foster carers at the time didn't want to take me, so I had to get a two-hour bus across Bristol to go and meet some random stranger in like some beat-down area where it's like fully covered. Like, you, if no one wanted to be seen, you wouldn't be seen. Do you know what I mean? If you're gonna go missing, mm. you'd go missing. <laughs> they were like, "Now nah, we can't be bothered to take you. Go get a bus. Here's two pounds." Mm. I was like, "All right, cool." And um, anyway, got there and I was looking around, and some guy was there. I was like, "Oh, is that is Hilly around?" I was expecting it to be a girl, isn't it? I was like, mm. Hillary there? He's like, yeah, I'm Hillary. I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, you were Hillary. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> You're trying to yeah, but this is even, yeah, but this is before even all that stuff started. This is just like, you're just an old person, isn't it? Who just mm. was just coaching, I guess. And then um, we did the training. I can't remember what we did. And I was like, this is rubbish, man. I was like, this is boring. I was like, can I mm. race? And he's like, he's like, you're not ready. I was like, I am ready. This is like, this is the first time I've ever trained, ever done anything. I was like, training is boring. I want to race. I don't want to be doing this. Not yet. Yeah. Anyway. So then he was like, because I was quite like cocky. Like, I was like, I was like I'm not here to just like train. I'm like, dead. It's like football, isn't it? Mm. You don't train on Sunday teams. You just train. Like, just turn up. You just, you're, you're, you're yeah, on the training. <laughs> and then you're starting 11. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you got it, you got it. <laughs> yeah. so I, was, I was expecting that I got it. And he was like, he's like, all right. Like, he was like, all right, cool. If you, if you think you're sick, come on, come on Sunday. We're training in, uh, we're racing in Leamington Spa. He's like, it's seniors though. So you're going to be racing grown, grown ups. I was, like, I was like, I got, don't worry about me, I got this. <laughs> so then anyway, went home, got my two hour bus home and um, got back to my foster care. I was like, ah, oh, I've been invited to race for Bristol. My first ever race on Sunday. Um, I need some running spikes. They're like, mm. they're like, oh, what a mate. Um, we're not buying them for you. I was like, oh, bro, okay. They're like, ask social services or something. We ain't got the money for that. I was like, oh, okay. Um, so now I'm emailing everyone in social services. Like, need to get this. Don't need to be the best. Do you know what I mean? Just like, whatever. I'll pay you back, mm. whatever. Anything, yeah. Yeah, anything. And then in the end, we end up getting them. And they were like, the old, old Nike. Like, I'm not even sure what spikes they were, but they were like, they weren't even sprint spikes. They didn't even have a plate. Do you know what I mean? They had like the oh, foam they, the Astro, were they the, um, the, just basically the, um, like everything spikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like yeah, black yeah, yeah. and grey and they just had a <laughs> massive night kick. They're in one of my photos somewhere. And um, I think I even like took them English schools in the end. But um, anyway, I raced. Oh no, so I got there. Everyone's warming up. You know how they do like all the pullback stuff and... Mm everything and I was like oh like it was a bit serious like, I'm, I'm... <laughs> but I was still like coming from a football background so I was like no block starts nothing but like yeah. I was like when they were like on your marks and I was like right so I need to get to the ball I'm going to pretend the ball isn't there where the finish line is <laughs> and if I get to the ball first I score and I win the world cup or something like that do you know what I mean like yeah. I've just got to be first to that line and then I ran you know like <laughs> yeah, all, all over the place, like all of that, like, like head back, <laughs> and then um, I think I ended up running eleven three or eleven two, hand timed, mm. and then but after that I was like, <gasps> and I was like, I still got the two hundred <laughs> coming up. I was like, oh, okay, so so two hundred gone. I jogged the first, not jogged. I'm like a good pace around the bend. The bend, mm. yeah, and then um, I just kicked last hundred. And then um, I ended up running 23.0 or 23.2, I think. And then, um, yeah, from there, really. And then I got a message from my friend. He literally just texted me, actually. He, he um, messaged me on Bebo and he goes, a couple of days later, he's like, you're number one in the Southwest. I was like, I was like what does that mean? Like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, he's been athletic, isn't it? He's like, you're number yeah. one in the Southwest and you're top, like, 15 in the country for your age. I'm like, what, what, what does that mean? Like, what are you telling me? And he's like, oh, yeah, mm. you, can, you can go, um, like, county champs, southwest champs, and you go to English schools, you'd be on Sky Sports and stuff. And I was, like, buzzing, ran downstairs. I was like, I'm, like, top 15 in the country after that one race, da-da-da. My foster carers are like, all right, cool, we're watching EastEnders. Can you, like, can you stop talking? <laughs> I was like, um, you know, like, I see, do good. Like, it was literally their mess, <laughs> but... um. But then anyway, from there, I got a message from someone else, from my old training partner, and he said, um, what did he say? He was like, do you want to train with the best or do you want to pretend to be the best? This is after like one race. And I was like, I'm not pretending to be anyone. Do you know what I mean? Like, I put it on my status. <laughs> like, no, no. But like, I'm not calling anyone out or anything. And I was like, but like, this is back then. I was like, yeah, cool. I can do it. What? What? What are you training fast? Olympians? Come on. I can do that. Anyway, when... This, that was my coach, well, is my coach now, James Hillier. Mm. Um, it was Lloyd Rice who invited me over. And then I got there, like, this is, I went in my different Arsenal gear. I went in the all white, <laughs> white, white and brown, with the brown, yeah. This, and, this um, is like patriotism of, of <laughs> the teams that is fine. Yeah, I, yeah like, I had to get the, I had to get a bus, then a train, then another bus. 
And then um, I got up there and they were like, all oh, right, we can do some training, da 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 da. And um, at the mm. time, when I was training there, um, Malcolm Arnold said to my coach James, he said, why are you wasting your time with this boy? Like, what, like, what are you doing with him? Why are you bringing him in? And James was like, oh, I see something in him. But he only told me this like a couple of years ago. So oh. I was literally just like, I've never been the best trainer anyway, so he must have been looking at me like, oh, like, like why is he wasting his time with this boy? But then mm. like a year later, we went um, European Youth Olympics in Turkey. Yeah. We got two silver medals there. We went to the Youth Commonwealth Games. We got one silver medal there. And then from then, really, just grew and grew. All right. So a year on from you starting the sport, you then earned your first international vest. Yeah. So how, how did you change from the guy who was running like this and head back and trying to gasp for air to earning a silver medal? Like what changed? Because obviously when you first got there, you was kind of like, oh, I don't want to train. I just want to run. Yeah. So, like, who got you to that point of saying, "Well, right, Liam, if you train, this is what comes afterwards. This is what you, this is where you can go. This is what you can get." Well, I, mean, I think it was being in the um, like facility that we were in. We trained at Bath Uni, and obviously at the time it was like I knew Jason Gardner because he's like a family friend. Okay. Uh, Craig Pickering was training there. Lawrence Clark was up and coming. Jack Green was up and coming. Jack Meredith was number one in the world, up and coming. Andrew <laughs> Posey was there. Names, boy. Ailey Doyle was there. Um, like the list goes on and on. And um, like seeing those guys, obviously they turn up and they're like Jaguars, and mm. like, they've all got like like they got spikes and they're throwing them around because they'll be like, oh, they'll send me a new pair. Do you know what I mean? Like they're yeah. just chilling. <laughs> And then it must have been like me obviously being 15, 16, being in foster care, being like, oh, like, you guys get kit for free? Like, people send you mm. stuff for free. They're like, yeah, like, you can take the spikes. I don't care. Like, so I was like, yeah, I want that. That's a bit of me. <laughs> and then James, James was like, come here five times a week from Bristol and we can get you good. So I literally mm. just sacrificed absolutely everything to get over so to Bath at the time. How many days a week were you training at that point? I went straight in five times a day. Five times a week, sorry. Five times a week? Yeah. That's interesting. We had, a, um, we had an interview <laughs> with another athlete. Um, I won't, I'm not going to say any names. Um, if you go through the, for the videos, you'll find out who it was. And up until the age of 26, he was only training three days a week. Really? Must be nice. Yeah. So it's quite <laughs> interesting that at that age that you were doing five days a week already, um, do you still do five days a week now or do you take it down a bit and train like maybe four days a week no I do six or is it just structured better six six days a week yeah how how does that look for you on a, on a week to week um, basis there's like down days so Monday is just gym Tuesday is track Wednesday is a down day so it's a core circuit mm -hmm. and then recovery day sort of things so like physio or whatever Thursday yeah. is back on the track Friday is usually a half and half day. So you've got the sun in your eyes, trying to get that glare. Mate, I'm, not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to get low glow. I'm just trying to stay here. <laughs> I was trying to be um, seen. <laughs> on, um, on Friday, it's like a little bit of track, a little bit of gym. Chill on Saturday, and then we run again on Sunday. So wait, were you still getting the boss on his train at this point? Or how were you getting to the track? Um, no, I was getting like bus train. Bus train. I didn't go to my prom because I had to go to like English a meeting schools. about English schools. A meeting about yeah. English schools. All oh, right. Yeah, in the southwest they don't ramp. It's like if you don't come to our meetings, then you're not getting selected. So like, Seriously? Yeah. yeah, bro. I actually think that's a good thing because for the north we actually get like nothing. You just get a letter yeah. in the post. Yeah. And you're just waiting for like, oh thing. please, please, this letter just come through the door. But yeah. I would have preferred to be there with other people that you know from the track, isn't it? But I didn't and know anyone because I was away. Because I was in Bath training with Olympians. So it's like private. Mm. You could not anyone <laughs> could walk on. It's like like the gate's closed. And when it's closed, it's locked. So only like certain like elite elite people can be on the track. And then To be there. Like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, um, was it hard being around people of that caliber so young? Yes and no, but they built me 
to the athlete I am, I think. Mm. So like, uh, like my Twitter name is Leon Reed underscore Woody. That's because Jack Green used to call me Woody because mm. I used to run like Woody off Toy Story. Like, <laughs> legs everywhere, arms everywhere. So that kind of stuff. So like, but like, even though I wasn't directly training with those guys, they were in Markham's group, I was in James's group, but mm. just having them around, like you'd be in the gym and you'd be doing like the baby weights, you know, when you're learning the gym. That's why I was five yeah. days because I was learning how to run. I was learning how to gym. I was learning how to do a plank. Like it yeah. wasn't like 300s every day. It was like, right, try and put this leg here rather than here. So it was really, really slow. So down. it was more like your body conditioning and getting you right and then seeing yeah. what you can do after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So after this that, process, what was what came, like what was the time you ran after that? Um, so I went from running eleven three hand timed to the year later I ran ten six electronic. Um, this is before I did two hundreds. I moved on after that. Um, this is two thousand eleven. So I ran ten point six at like sixteen. The f- three years. Yeah. Because you no, you no, were that, there when. That, Oh yeah, sorry. No, 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 I was, I was there, and then um, that was yeah. I ran my PBA, the European use. Because I think that was the same. You came up on the same year as um, Jamili. Yeah. Because they were all really young, like yeah. <laughs> CJ. Right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. We was at um, we was at English schools, and obviously he came second. David won, and then um, we were all chilling after. And this is like when everyone's adding each other on Facebook, innit? So I had to like, mm. this like I had like 5,000 friends on Facebook for no reason. And um, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, Adam, I would, I would add you on Facebook, but I don't add my competitors or something like that. <laughs> I was like, you're a rival, you're not a friend. Do you know what I mean? And then I'm... Um, See, I like this stuff. <laughs> I like this stuff. No, it gets, it gets better, it gets, it gets better, it gets better. So, um, like... Oh, don't don't get me started on that. By the way, that's the, the whole different conversation. But um, <laughs> but um, a couple of years later, something got brought up or something, and then he was like, "Yeah, someone, someone, Adam. This is like we're talking like in front of like Chichindu, like that. Like, this is when all the big names are all together in the UK. Mm. And he was like, "Yeah, someone um wouldn't add me on Facebook or something or da 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 da." And I pulled it onto the side. I was like, "I was like, bro, that was me." I was like, "Don't bring it up." I was like, don't be a dickhead, don't be a dickhead. <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Like, it's, like I would bring it up more and share you out. See, for me, I would have put you under that pressure. Like, I would, I yeah, would have done he's it. A, he's, a, he's, a, he's a nice guy. You're not. I'll, it, so. No, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, but you know, pressure has to be put sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but like back in the day, this is what I was saying. Like back in the day, everyone used to be put on pressure. Do you know what I mean? Like it used to mm. be like. Like, we used to come to the track. Obviously, we're all friends. But, like, it's game day. Do you know what I mean? Like, I see juniors now at competitions holding hands and that before racing. And I'm just like... <laughs> I was like, if you if you ever tried to hold Chichindu's hand before a race, somebody would be getting punched up. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and now they're all... Oh, it's too soft, man. Did you have that thing with the south the north the east you know in not, english not schools really, or... not really because the south isn't that big it ain't i mean really about we, all that know, life. we all know that essex is the fastest county closely followed by london so this it doesn't need to be debated mm-hmm. i'm just saying that's that's cute. That's a cute little fact. Just saying. Have you got have you got that on your wall? Have you? <laughs> uh, no, I, I probably would have, but you know, I, I wasn't the fastest oh, guy. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm just repping for the end. But I, I wasn't the fastest guy, but I rep for the end. <laughs> Stay true to my to, the, to that nasty purple and yellow color. Yeah, of course. But, um, I remember I remember being at English schools in Birmingham, and I'm sat in the whatever, sat down. All the teams are coming in or whatever. And they were like, oh, yeah, Birmingham's coming in a minute. We were like, oh, okay, like, cool. They're like, they got a big team. Like, oh, okay, cool. The whole stadium's gone quiet. You hear something come out of the, the whole thing. Someone's come out of the job. Boom, 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 boom. Like, it was like, oh, I don't know what they were saying, but they were, like, chanting. And I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's about 100 of them as well. They kept coming. <laughs> See, again, I like stuff like that because yeah. it's like, 
that that's like a yeah you're on our home turf but we're and we're not gonna just allow you guys to come here and think that it's gonna be hunky dory oh it's the same with birch like, no no one can step I, to us no i my, like that my, kind of my team is drilled no one comes to birch and beats us no do you one. think that there is enough club competitions or do you think that there should be more um well, it's a bit tricky for me because I, as a team captain for Bertrand, I try to make as many as I can, but sometimes it doesn't fit into the race plan well enough. So I mm. feel like I'm letting the team down, even though there's only like how many matches in there? Like four. I think for British League, it's about four or five. Yeah. And some, and well, and now they that they're joining together, yeah, there's always a clash with the Northern League and yeah. well, whether Midlands yeah. League, there'll be a clash at least twice. Yeah, but I think now that they've changed it from the women's and men's Sorry, league, it's back gonna back. all come into one. Yeah, I mean because they've they've moved. Because last year I remember it, it tends to clash twice, at least twice. So yeah. there must be like a little thing they do now. Yeah, no, it's annoying. So I'm obviously trying to do as many as I can for the club, but sometimes it doesn't work out. So, what do, do, is there anyone in the club that sort of feel like oh that pest pest to you? You should be here. You should be here. Oh, I no, not like... at all. My my team's like really good. We're all backing each other to the end. I feel like that's why we're like so good because we're like Leicester. We ain't got the best team, but we turn up and we work. We can win the league. And we're, <laughs> yeah, but we like we work together. If someone's not feeling all right, it's like like we'll sit down and be like, "What's going on? What's going on at home?" It's not just like it doesn't just start at the track and end of the track. We're like a family. If anybody needs mm. anything, they wouldn't be like, "Oh." I'm too scared to go and knock on his door. They were like, boom, boom, boom. What are you saying? Like, like, oh, and we fight like a family as well. It's not all love. Sometimes we fight, but it's all for the love of the team. That's the nice, nice do well. camaraderie between, between like the team in general. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is that as where you started, it seemed like your, your foster family wasn't very supportive. Mm. Um, has that changed since? Yeah, well, um, I moved to Bath and you get put in like a halfway house. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then that flopped as well. So I had to move in with my, the woman that I call mum now, which is my best friend's mum. Okay. So I don't live there now. She lives down in Brighton, but I still yeah. call her mum. She's still like my family. Mm -hmm. So since I got sorted there, it was more, everything was relaxed, everything. Because I was running, I remember running terrible in training and I was racing like an idiot. And James was going, mm. what's going on? What's going on? And usually you're like, oh, I'm like, I'm fine. Like, whatever. Da -da -da. Yeah. And then one day I was just like, basically, I'm pretty much homeless. I'm staying at my mate's house. Like, and he was like, yeah, you can tell when you're running. And he was like, helping me sort all of that out as well. So when that all got sorted, that's when I went like, European juniors and then done bits there just because my head was so clear. Yeah. So... That so obviously that had an, uh, a negative effect on on like how you were training and stuff. Um, was there anything else that kind of helped you like push through that? Um, like what? Like how was you able to distract yourself to kind of push that to one side? It was more just being in a stable place because mm. all my life I've been in care since I was a baby. So literally, if you don't have like a stable like base yeah the rest is just gonna fall apart and it was all falling apart so like, i was able to like move in with my friend's mom and then i could get a job i could do that i was in baths so i could train it was easier do you know what i mean like, it was just more stable i was able to it was just a lot less pressure on my head speaking of uh, jobs how are you funding yourself at the moment i'm fully supported by ireland and northern ireland Nice. Oh, yeah, so nice. I'm funded by them, and I also do I do coaching in schools as well. So I well school. So I do um, infants because I okay. love working How with How do you find that? Kids. I, I work in a school. <laughs> so I, I love it, man. <laughs> little ones, talking like four, five. I love it. You do that young? Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I can't deal with older kids. I mean, I can. <laughs> I, I prefer the little ones because you get to like shape them. You get to like help. I'm like, the opposite. I'm the opposite, man. I can't, you know why I can't do the younger kids? Because they whine too much. 
Yeah, they, and they do, can play but... into that. But do you know what? But that's you're a good in thing. Control. You're no, yeah, in control. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're in control. So they're like, oh, I'm cold. I'm like, go and sit inside them. We're going to go and play. They're like, actually, I'm not cold anymore. I'm like, yeah, be quiet. <laughs> get to the back of the line. <laughs> See, yeah, but it works the same with the older kids. When they try, like, act like they're in command, no, nah, I will call your mum and we'll see who's in charge. I'll call, I'll call your mum. <laughs> I'll call your mum now while we're in the lesson. So please yeah. carry on. I'll, I'll put it on like, last week. I'll hold it up. Yeah. No, but I've done it. Like, I've yeah. obviously done it. I've, I've called a child's parent in the class and yeah. had them on last week and the parent blasted the child. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there laughing because I'm thinking, not only does this look bad for you when you go home, that I've had to call you your parent yeah. during class. All your friends are going to now look at you like, oh, you got told off <laughs> by your mum <Yeah>. in school. <laughs> so, you know, it has, its, it has its advantages working with older kids, but each of their own. Yeah. Each of their I, own. But speaking of working with older kids, I also do some mentoring as well for kids that are like having trouble at home or in mm-hmm. gangs or mm-hmm. I, had one, I had one mentee that was like drinking and taking drugs in school, so like in lessons. So we'd be in the class like this with a bottle of water. It wouldn't be water, mm. it'd be vodka. And he'd just be drinking it. Have that. Had that. Had that. I worked with a child like that. Um, not the year, just last year, I had a child who I was um, working with through, say, through a similar um, situation. But knowing that you do speak in, we'll be in touch. I'll be in touch. <laughs> this, this could work out very handy later on down the um, line. Well, um, what? When I was in um, India, I got a call because obviously I had to leave. I, was moved, I had to go to India in December because my coach got a job out there. And then um, I got a call in like February and um, it was like my, I guess, reach out point to the mentee or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like he'd stopped smoking, stopped drinking, stopped taking drugs. He was going to college like six times a week or well, five times a week, sorry. And he was like in a really good place and they were like, yeah, this is all down to you. So well done and I was like that that's sounds good. you don't feel it's, like it's, gonna... a, it's a nice feeling yeah it is it's a very it's nice feeling like... mental. So, so on your do you want to go so on I your don't... um selection so let's talk about the selection for obviously island allegiances and the issues around that what what happened with that process and how did you how did you take it personally you know and how did it all work out? Right, so I'll tell you something that not a lot of people know, right? So basically how it all started out was I was running well in 2013. I went European Juniors and I think it was 2014. I had a bit of a shallow year and then 2015 we were training again really well and um. This is when I was on funding, actually. And um, they said, to keep your funding, all you've got to do is medal at Europeans. They sat me down. I was in a meeting. Two of the head guys at British Athletics, they were like, we don't care about times because you're the only one that's going, Great Britain, to the Europeans for sprints, male. I was like, right, okay. Like, no pressure then. So they were like, yeah, if you want, like, if you keep your funding, just get us a medal, innit? All we care about is medals. They've got to make a quota. So anyway, I've gone there, heats, like it's fine. Semi-final, I'm running well, I'm running like really well. And I'm like, oh, let me just chill because it's going to be like a bit of a close final. Yeah. And, I, and then in that, um, in the semi-final, I equaled my PB after I shut down like 60 meters to go. I think there's a video on YouTube of me just chilling, looking around. And I was mm. like, right, I'll save it for the final. And in the final, I think I ran the same time as the semi. I got beat, but I finished second. Then it was either just like you could have run well in your semi and then you could have been messed up for the final or mm. save it and then whatever. But um, anyway, got back to the UK. They sat me down. They were like, yeah, cool. Well done. Smashed it. Got a medal. That's all we wanted from you. Like, don't change anything. You're running well. Um, hopefully you can qualify for the world championship. So I ran 20.6, but the, at the time the qualifying was 20.5. Mm. And, um, right. and then um, I was like, oh, I can't. But um, didn't end up qualifying for the Worlds. And then in like, October, whatever, they sat me down again. They were like, oh, yeah, you're not on funding next year. I was like, oh. I was like, but all you said I needed to do was get a medal. Yeah, like, no, we don't want medals. We want times. Wow. That's... And then 
from then. So like, you'll be surprised how many senior athletes, if you guys speak to, are like they'll say now how many how many interviews or meetings that they had they wish they recorded as proof. Because yeah. I guarantee you they'll put so many down that they just wish they recorded conversations. So those meetings, I'm did you always go on your own? But I'm sorry. Did you always go on your own to those meetings, or were you always? Did you always have someone there with you? No, it was. It was. More, it's not like a meeting. Like, oh, sit down. Let's talk. Let's get all this. It was like, it was like a casual chat. But they've got like all the files, all the paperwork down on you. They're like, how many times you've been physio? What your graph is doing? Everything. All of that. And they were like, yeah, you're like leveling off. You can either go up or down. And they were just like, but like, I've gone in the next. They already said I'm secure. <laughs> oh, and then they were just like. No, nah, you ain't on. And so I was just in reality. You that. said this is 2013, right? No, uh, no. This is 2015. Yeah, this is after European under 23s. Yeah. How, how disheartening was it to hear that? Or did it just drive you to do more? To be like, well, you know what? Cool. That's how you're going to do me. Well, I'm going to show you that this is why I should have been on funding. Yeah. It was pretty much that. And then, well, we went to, we were going for Rio 2016. I went to the USA and there was something in their food which just messed me up. All my tendons were finished. Mm. Like when you, because obviously when you're like, you're 18, you haven't got, you've got money, but you ain't got that much money. I mean, so you've got, mm. you got like yeah. spending money in it, what, whatever. Yeah. I, just, I was staying at my aunties and I'm, it was like, that like I could either stay home, prep food, cook, or go Texas wings that are unlimited wings for $8. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I know what I'm picking. There you go. So this is what we were doing quite a lot. But obviously at the time, you don't really know like what they're putting into their food or whatever. So I grew like um, three quarters of an inch. All my tenders, like it was hurt. I, it could, I couldn't run because I was just mm. growing. And I did, we didn't know what was going on. But obviously now looking back, it's easy to see that it was the food. Yeah, and it just messed up my whole 2016 season, and then from but, then it was like, forget British athletics, man. I was like, I'm not fighting for you lot. After I've done so much, after the past like five, six years, I've been at every relay meeting, every camp, every everything. We did what they wanted you to do. Like you did exactly Literally. what they asked you to do. That's it. That's, there's nobody you can ask for. So 2017. Um, World Champs. Yeah. Was it that was, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I qualified. Yeah. I finished third at the Nationals at Brit for Britain. Yeah. And I ran 20.38. Or 36, maybe. I'm not sure. And um, I finished third behind Adam and Nathaniel. Mm. And then um, literally from them, we were just like, get the paperwork done. And then it was literally just like, I feel like we missed, because they didn't tell anyone there was going to be a lock-off for the Allegiance switch. It was just yeah. one, one day they just did it. And um, I think we handed in the paperwork like on the day that they did it. And they were like, nah, we can't accept it. And then from then I had to wait like, it might have been just a year maybe, because it wasn't an official mm. ban. But because I hadn't competed for GB since 2015, European 23s, yeah. my three yeah. years had been done. So I was able to switch. See, that's a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Your whole America ordeal was definitely a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Had that happened, we wouldn't be able to call you Irish. Um, I, um, <laughs> Ireland fastest Irish. man. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Well, yeah, Irish fastest man. I could still use that, but it's not correct. Yeah, dramatically, but yeah. Um, so did was, you get approached by Ireland, or was it, or did you have to do that yourself? No, well, um, we did it ourselves. It was me and my coach. It was my coach's idea because he's Welsh in it, so mm. he was like, at this time, I was still running for Northern Ireland, and they were like, if you run for yeah. Northern Ireland, you can get a passport for Ireland. Because I'm actually, yeah. um, you guys might be able to help me out with this. So I'm, my mum is full Irish. Mm. So that, I guess that makes me half. And my mum is, um, sorry, my mum's full Irish and my dad yeah. is half English, half Jamaican. So <laughs> like half and a quarter and a quarter or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Something so you're more like Irish that. then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm more, more Irish than I'm English. 
I'm weird. I'm a firm but I'm a firm believer of you know if you have the opportunity to go and run for another country because this country hasn't treated you well, go for it. Yeah, go for it because I mean there's been so many times where you know certain people are, are deserving of funding and places for individual spots and they go give it to someone else. So, you know, if you're not going to get the recognition from who you're trying to get it from and someone else is giving you an opportunity, why not? Yeah, for real. Mm-hmm. Like, even like why not for International, GB never selected me for any of the individuals. Ever. Really? Not for International? Yeah. yeah. So I never got the first GB kit where everyone else did. And I'm... Um, I always ran faster on the day than the person they selected. <laughs> that's, that's like full on agenda, isn't it? <laughs> See, that again is where I just walk past and be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty much what I did at Europeans in Berlin. So obviously I made the final, semi-final. I went toe-to-toe mm. with the world champion. Mm. And I, we were like looking at each other and I was like, yeah. And then he had to speed up and he dipped me on the line. And then after that, there were people from British Athletics. And it was, it was quite funny, actually. And um, like some of like, the top guys in British Athletics, they were like, oh, um, oh well done, you're in the final. Da, 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 da. Mm. And you could tell they're a little bit pissed because I've just gone toe-to-toe with the world champion. And, you, like, know, <laughs> you know when you're just like, don't speak to me. We're not friends. <laughs> well, literally, me and my coach were just like, yeah, what are you saying now? What are you saying now? <laughs> it happened at the Commonwealth Games as well. So... Obviously, I got the bronze after. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Was qualified. Thanks, man. And I'm oh. literally warming down. And obviously, I, I used to run for England when I was younger. So I know yeah. all the staff. We all like Loughborough, whatever. You know all the staff. And then I'm, I was like jogging past, warming down and stuff. And then they were all like clapping, like, yeah, like, come on, like, well done and stuff. Because I've known them for, mm. for years and they don't get involved in all the political stuff. So all the people that were like genuinely happy were like genuinely happy. Do you know what I mean? They were just like yeah. coming out on the track and they were like, come here, like hugging me and stuff. They like they kept me together all those years. But you'd never get that. Rich, does does the does it change much in terms of who works for England athletics and who works for British athletics? Is it like a completely really? different team or is it they're quite similar, but you just have a certain amount yeah, of people they, who work they're for quite, one particular. They're quite similar, but I feel like um, some people can pick who they want to work with. So if like five athletes want to work with one physio, they'll bring up that physio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of have a choice of who you want to work with. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. What, what did, what changed for you once you won that um, Commonwealth bronze? Um, not much, really. It's more confidence. Mm. More than anything. Because, off that, in 2017, I was working three jobs at the time. I was, uh, um, and training full time. So I was a manager of a supplement store. I was, um, handy coaching, coaching in a school. Yeah. And I was also working in a nightclub. From like Bob? 10 to 4 a.m. Yeah, so no right. sleep then. <laughs> no sleep. I was training. Yeah. So no sleep. And I was literally like, so I'd get up at like eight, go mm. training at nine finish at like one, go for lunch, be at the school for like three, work yeah. until four, half four, get home five, chill, eat for nine. I got to be back in the, I got to be in the club until mm. three, pack up, get home four. Damn. And then four hours sleep, you do it again. And that's the thing, because um, I obviously, um, I DJ a little bit and I know that for you guys. A little you know, bit. A little bit. It's just, it's, you know, it's not a lot. It's just here and there. Um, obviously, for us, we finish, like, we finish at five. Club finishes at five. But for you guys, you still got the whole clean-up afterwards. Yeah. Got to clean so, all the bottles, or the cups, or the floors, or the fridges, or the sides. So long. And then to go train in the morning, and early morning at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. But... You know, I, I suppose when you when you now have the opportunity to be funded by someone, you kind of look back and think, you know what, I'm glad I did it that way. Yeah. Because I can appreciate this a whole lot more. Yeah. Um, whereas off, you know, British athletics like to just be very, oh, yeah, you can have this and you can have this early and then it just doesn't materialise into oh, nothing. Mate. It's like, you're not that good, but you look pretty, so we're going to give you money. <laughs> well, I mean, do you know what? I... 
I had a look on on some of the funding lists earlier today just to see like you know okay well I don't always pay attention to it let me see who's on there and I'm looking at some of the names and I was really looking like but I haven't seen you do anything spectacular for a few years and you're still all right you're on relay funding but funding's funded Mm -hmm. I don't I genuinely don't get it I don't understand how you process how you go through the process of deciding who is deserving of it and who's not but mm. wow. what's what the Irish think? one like what's the Irish people like yeah what's their you know selection of funding like um at first it was a bit sticky because not like obviously I was always going to get like selected and stuff if I qualified but it was just like I think it was last year maybe or the year before after nationals I'd won nationals and um won the 200 I didn't do the 100 and then the European team champs was the week after and I felt like they needed to stay up or something and mm. then um I got an email and it was like I was like European team champs selection blah 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 I didn't even look at it and I was like oh yeah calm cool I'll sort that later and then I was on the bus and I was like let me read this quickly because I've got time and it was like oh well done you've been selected for the 100 meters I was like and then I emailed them I was like oh is this right so I don't do 100 meters. I'm not about that life, really. Yeah. They were like, yeah, yeah, they're 100 meters. They were like, oh, we want to put our strongest team in. I was like, right, so who's doing the 200? And they were like, oh, Marcus, this other 200 meter run from Ireland. I was like, yeah, the guy that I beat yesterday. And he's got a faster 100 meter time than me. And I was like, so what, how did you work this one out? And they were like, oh, we just think that this and this and this. And I was like, I was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, I'm not doing it. I was like, I ain't going. I, d I didn't go. I was like, I'm not. I'm not. All right. I was like, I got a niggle. I ain't going. <laughs> I like that. I was like, you're paying me to run. To let let me run. They could. They might have tried to hit you with that. Oh, but you could come for a relay. Nah, niggle's too bad. Oh, they, oh, they wanted me for a relay as well, of course. Mate, this it just sounds like headache and politics oh right, bro you have no idea like, no no idea but like, Ireland have been very good if I've ever like hurt my hamstring or hurt my back or anything like that they're on it like I get someone's like I get someone seen in like they can send me to someone in Bath in like an hour they're really For really real? good yeah they're really really good how often so, do you get treated yeah um, I'm just freestyling I because they don't because it's EIS over here they didn't have yeah. like, Irish physios or whatever. So I see like local guy and stuff like that. So it's really chill. So when you were in um, South Africa and training with obviously some big names, um, what was that like for you, the change from moving from here to there? Uh, it was fine, really. It was like um, Wade's like really cool. So like, you expect him to be like cool because obviously he invited me over, but it was like, you don't expect him to invite you like into your house and to meet his family and stuff like that. So, like every morning he'd come and like pick me up and take me training with him or physio with him. Mm. But like imagine, imagine going to like imagine Gatling going, Oh, come come over. He'd be like, Alright, cool, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, good luck. If it's my last my <laughs> last monies to get on that flight, I'm going. But like but like, yeah, Wade was really accommodating, he was really good. So no. What about the, um, the coaching? And, yeah, did you train together? Oh, me and Wade. Mm. Yeah, every every day. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I learned a few things. I was supposed to go back out there, but um, obviously this happened. Yeah. So I'd like to be based out there pretty much like full time, really. Is that so, so? You want to be based out there full time? Is that something that um, your sponsors would be able to accommodate for you? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Oh, cool. See? In, um, in 2019, <laughs> in 2019, uh, when you're doing the Diamond Leagues, and, and I think you did four Diamond Leagues? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Were you sponsored by New Balance then? No. I wasn't sponsored by anyone. I'm still not sponsored by anyone now. All right. I just thought you were sponsored oh, by getting, New Balance. No, I was getting kicked off on Under Armour. Oh, okay. Yeah. How hard is it? to maintain a deal or to get a deal and then maintain it? Wow. 
to get one, I ain't got one. And I was 15th yeah. fastest in the world. So it's not about what you do. <laughs> it's about who you know, who you know. and how much ass you want to kiss. Because if you know me, I'm not about the life. I'm like, I'm straight to the point. So mm. I'm not looking to suck any toes for some for some spikes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I, I, I feel that. I mean... There are people that are gonna do it, and then there's the people who ain't gonna do it. It just depends on how how you want to go about it, because essentially that stuff gets around as well, man. And ain't nothing worse than kind of being on the circuit and then your name's being spoken about in in a disrespectful way, I suppose. Mm. But um, like, obviously, where this year's kind of just gone to downstown. Mm. What is it like? for you going forward like how do you necessarily recover from something that was very much out of your control and especially uh-huh. where they're putting a timetable together that looks very congested yeah they can do that I ain't doing that I'm not, <laughs> yeah I'm not so what are you looking what are you looking to do yeah um, train training one what yeah train I'm gonna stay healthy go on a holiday and then start winter training again I think I don't think I can put myself in a situation where I can be running 20.1, 20.2 off mm. the stuff I've been doing. If you went on the mm. track right now, yeah, right now, what do you think you would run? 21.2. All right, that's a pretty decent marker, to be fair. Yeah, 20.2. You run down. 21.2, yeah. Yeah, why not? And if you went, if you went to do the one, I already did one this year and I ran 10.4. So I'd say like 10.5, 10.6. Not bad. 10.4 and your PB's 10... 10.3, 10, 10, two. That's not bad. That, yeah. that sounds Every, like... Everything, that. Was go- everything was going all right. It was going all right. <laughs> These times I ran in February, where everyone was doing mm. indoors. I did some races in South Africa. It was like... Do you do indoors much? No. Any particular yeah. reason why? The 60s too short. And yeah. The two and the two is too bendy. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> when, the way I pick up speed, I build. But when it gets, so I, I come around, blah, 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 and then I'm up on the back straight, and then when to go, that's usually where Still I go again. again. Yeah. It's like, it like lifts and twists. So I yeah. always kind of like, Ugh. so I kind of have to like build, build, build. Even well, when I do like national doors, you've got to like hold back. And then go again, and it just slows down. It messes up my rhythm, and it's rubbish. It's just, yeah, dead. When's so what? What's your? Gonna, mm, yeah. When's the last time you did an indoor? Not that long ago, 2018 maybe. No, couldn't have been. Yeah, Eight, no, 18, yeah. I think. I ran. I ran. I did a 60, and it was whack. What's your 60 PB? 72, I think. Yeah, six seven two. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, no, it's alright. Not... Considering you don't do them often. Yeah, well, that's that's when I laugh when people like, I'm not gonna name any names, but they run like they're like ten free runners and six six runners. I'm like, mm. I don't even do your event, and you're moving like you're Usain Bolt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? Like, like we said, this is what the sport needs. We need more of that, more of the, you know, the brash comments and, like, calling people out. Like, I would love to see, like, a whole year, you know. Yeah, I'm going to put down a thousand pounds and I yeah. challenge that person to a race. Yeah. Over, and, it, and it's not over a distance. Yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 yeah. Over yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. So it could be over 120. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or 180. Yeah. Something different. And then it's then that kind of just brings a little bit more of a vibe to the sport because then you really get like head to heads as well. Yeah, definitely. And it some people say, oh, but it interferes with training. It really doesn't. No, it doesn't. It That's really just doesn't because so you can do it as a training session. Whack. Because like, to me, that's the training session. That's the training session to earn some money. Yeah. Or lose some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe start off low, like a three hundred, and we'll build from there. Yeah, I'd be like, that's calm. If someone was like, I'll race you for £100, I'd be like, yeah. Listen, 
in I this guess, current climate. Get, get on Twitter, in it. Then it's just. Listen, I got a stripper. I got a stripper concrete in the car park. Let's go. Literally, it's about forty that's, meters. Let's go. But like that's the thing. But just like no, no one will be on it because we were talking about this the other day because um there were some comments coming out of Wales that I could get beat over two fifty or um it might have been a lot of one twenty and these are mm. people and I'm like but like, even the guys that they're telling I train with them in it so yeah they know about me and they know what I can do and they're like. They're like, no, 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 you wouldn't have him. Trust me, you wouldn't have him. Because I hold all the group records in, like, flying 30, mm. 120, 250, 300. Like, all, like, the main ones in my, around my event, I hold them. Nice. And they're like, no, 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 I could beat him. No, 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 I could do this. And I was, I was thinking, I was going to I was gonna message you and be like, come, come Bristol, bro. Well, I mean, there we go. <laughs> we just got to put it down. Like, all right, you cool, you think you could beat me? Well, let's do it. Do you yeah. train with the Cardiff Meds group? I don't know. No, no, no. The uh, people that I'm question, talking about do. Is it from Matt Elias' group that the person said that yes. they could beat you in a race? It is. <laughs> but it's not any race. It's like over like 150, 120, 250. I mean, even depending on what the boss says. Even 300. Depending on what the boss of Athletics Production says, I think we should go down and film it. Like, <laughs> like, Bro, last man is over. This is what I'm I think we could, That's the we, thing we could do this. It's like a whole new are. channel. Head to heads. And <laughs> head to heads. You um, have a YouTube channel, don't you? Me? Yeah. Yeah, it's got some bits and bobs in there. I'm not sure what's on there. I haven't checked it. I'm like, <laughs> I, I went on YouTube before. Was it, was it me doing drills? Just, yeah, drills, some races, or like, you. I think you had like a body cam. There was one where you had a body cam. Yeah. Road to... Road to Rio. Rio. I think, yeah, that was it. <laughs> Where did you put the camera? You had, like, how many cameras did you have? <laughs> it was done by, like, this guy who does all my, like, photography now in Bath. So he had, like, GoPros and stuck them on and he was doing all sorts of me, so... Yeah, yeah you used like, to post, you used to have, like, a lot of posts. Like, it's quite good. Like, do you still carry on doing things like that, like, post your training sessions? I think you did one on Instagram recently. I was quite sick with you in the yeah, car park like, and then yeah, doing back well, flips was, as well. <laughs> yeah, got to make it fun. You can do a back flip. Yeah, come on. I learned from one back. of my mentees, actually. I was in the um, air hop and he's like, can you back flip? I was like, no, but I want to learn, innit? Because obviously they're all young, <laughs> they'll think they're sick, innit? But like, he's doing yeah. back flip and I'm like, teach me, innit? <laughs> he's like, I was like, teach me, I'll buy you McDonald's. He's like, literally just do this, do this, do this. I was like, boom, like that, done it. Smashed it. I've been trying for years and I get round halfway and I just forget about my legs. <laughs> I just forget to put my legs down, so I end up on my knee. Do you do it all in the foam pit? Yeah. Because I, I learned in the foam listen, pit. I started doing it on a high jump bed many, many years ago. And yeah, it but, never worked. Yeah. And then I tried. Then when all the, the trampoline parts started becoming like the thing to go to, like it was new date day and shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tried to do it and it just wasn't working. And then I blew up my knee, so I just gave up. Yeah. Done my ACL on my patella, so I was like, yeah, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, that, that one ain't for you, Chief. <laughs> yeah, nah. Maybe a little roly poly somersault thing. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. You, you never lose that. You learn that as a child. That sticks in the, in the memory, innit? Um, what is like your favorite training session? Um, it has to be 120s, I think. 120. What's your fastest 120? Uh, 11.8. Jeez, sir. Yeah. 11.8. All right, then. I love a good 120, man. Yeah. 120 Into is a nice. Wind. Into the wind training or out of the, or um, with a following wind? Training purposes only because we know what we want for yeah, competition. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's a tricky one. It's on the 300s. If you get it in your face for the first 50, mm. and then it'll bring you home nicely in a tailwind. So it depends what event, really. All right, um, all right. Is there... So this is just some quick-fire questions that we always yeah, do um, during I'm ready. interviews. Um, I'm ready. All right, so... You have the choice <laughs> of doing your own 4 by one relay. Yeah. Past and present. Who are you picking for the men's team? And order. 
kill him first leg. Mm-hmm. Ah, see, I don't know. Because like, I know a lot of athletes are like really into athletics. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not that guy. I'm really not that guy. So when you're saying old people, I'm like, ooh, sticky ones. All right, we'll go, we'll go back, say, 90s? Uh, okay. oh, what, are, you, are you saying anyone or just in Britain? Yeah, you, you could pick anyone. You can oh, pick okay. anyone you want. All right, so I'm going to kill you on first leg when he was mm-hmm. world champs. Um, I want Johan Blake on a back straight when he was doing some fast times, let's say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> on the bend, I'm going to want... Is this, am I included in this, Bob, I want? You yeah. can be if you you can be yeah. if you wish. I don't think I'm I'm elite enough to be in this in the presence of this team. You never know. It's a rolling start, man. Rolling starts breed fast times. <laughs> nah, not with the team I'm about to select. I'll put Jamili on third. Okay. And then I'll obviously put Bolt on fourth. That's a good. Like that's a good that's team that's to be fair. Uh, like but team. why no Americans? Because they're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> If he picks the Americans, the medal might get taken away from him. <laughs> yeah, trust me. I didn't say that. I promise I didn't say that. But I'd have, I'd have, I'd have Kilty over Coleman because I know Kilty in it, and I've seen him run, and there's just, mm. I know Coleman's sick, but I've seen Kilty like he's just wired different, and he's just like Speaking when he goes, Coleman, he just goes. Do you think Coleman yeah. will break the world record? I don't know. I don't think so. No. You don't think so? No. What gives you, what, what makes you think that? If you don't mind me asking. No, I, I, not that I don't see it in him. I just more just like, even though Bolt broke it, it was mm. more just like, I don't know, the way he did it. It was just like, mm. like the times Coleman's running now, even though like, like yeah. age, whatever. But like, yeah. Bolt, Bolt used to jog those times for fun. And True. now they're being won. He used to win Diamond Leagues in the times that are winning world champs. True. True. So it was very, very true. just like, it's like a whole nother level of levels. But obviously, Common's still young. He's like, how old is he? Mm. Younger than me. 23? How old are yeah. you? 25? I'm 25, 26? yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's about 22, 23. Yeah, so he's got time to grow. All right. Yeah. Marvel, DC. Well, I've got... Let me see this. DC there. So those are actually okay. Batman throwing knives that I bought in America, which I threw into the wall, and it put a massive hole in my wall. It sticks like a <laughs> <Batman. laughs> But they're sharp. If you take them out, they're knives. So I thought Sick. it'd be safer if I put them in a frame. <laughs> so don't touch them. <laughs> so I don't play with them. But then I'm and also... And the Joker card. Yeah. I just see I, it up I, there as well. I throw that in there. And then I, but I've got Marvel in the hallway. Mm. But for me, it's Marvel because it's just jokes. DC is fine. Sad. Justice League, right. sad. Rushed, sad. Yeah, yeah but that's movie... That's movie, yeah. Movie-wise, I'll agree with that. Like, by the way... If either of you two watch like the animation stuff, go check out Justice League Dark. It is sick. Is that the one I just came watched out this year? Yeah, like two days ago, <laughs> two, three days uh, ago. Oh, yeah. I, I did see that like, earlier, but um, I've watched all of them. I haven't seen this one yet. It's good. Trust me. It's really good. All right. Batman or Iron Man? Batman, of course. Superman or Thor? Superman. The Flash? Flash. Depending on any any version of the Flash, <laughs> Quicksilver. Flash. Yeah, it's always going to be Flash. It's only because be Flash. only because in the comics, Flash was so he was like real. Like he would be he'd be on like a therapist bed talking to the therapist about his dad dying mm. while he's saving a building from being burnt down. He was that quick. He could be in like four places at once. He can do like yeah. a punch that has more force in the world than anything else ever. But they didn't right. put that in the films because it just won't be good. It won't be fun. It, it wouldn't yeah. be fun for the for the movie. All right. Superman or The Flash? Superman. In the race. Nah. 
Kanye. Oh. It, it, you could you could do it in a race, but I'm still picking the Flash. I feel like no, the Superman. Flash would be. You think the Flash would lose to Superman in a race? Yeah. Nah, I feel like this <laughs> this conversation has got to continue off, off camera because <laughs> there's there's some there's something wrong going on here. But all right, cool. Um, do you watch any other sports apart from football? Rugby. Rugby. All right. What is your favourite food off season? See, like, with me, I'm not like, do you know, those athletes that are like, oh, I won't drink alcohol in season. I can't have anything over 200 calories. You're boring. Mm-hmm. So, like, if <laughs> I want to drink, I'm drinking. If I want to eat, I'm eating. Obviously, mm. if I've got national final tomorrow, I'm not going to have dominoes. I'm not an idiot. But yeah. If, if I'm like in season, I've just raced. I haven't got a race for two weeks. I'm going on the down week next week. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting pizza delivered to my hotel room. Like, I'm, I like that. I'm not just like, chilled. I'm in, I'm in season. Mm. I can't eat this or eat that. It's sad. What's your go to <laughs> ritual before a race? Um, so I like to listen to this one song, which I've edited into another song as well. It's um, Eric Thomas, How Bad Do You Want It? But mm, I've also mm-hmm. edited that into, do you know, um, the XX, the intro? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's on, um, I think so. You'd know it. I'll have to double it. check. Boom, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I'll double check because I probably have it right and everything and it's, it's wicked sick so it goes with the uh, music really well and it goes with the speaking and that comes up and that's just like that is my jam alright what's your favourite genre of music R&B R&B of course come on I swear I everyone's like, R&B, you know. I feel like we'll, we'll be good friends, you know. I yeah, honestly man. feel like we'll be good friends. So, yes. Um, all Have right. you been I've following got... the Twitter thing? Wait, NS10. 10v10. NS10. <laughs> I have, but I haven't. Because there was like, they like, what was it? They were doing Chris Brown the other day, but they weren't. Yeah, that's it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, like, that one. But like, like, even Brown like, Usher. Usher. Yeah, and it was just like they weren't playing some of like Usher's biggest songs. They weren't playing some of Chris Brown's. Like, why are they playing "Post to Be" with Chris Brown? But but remember, because <laughs> because no, because what it was, how they done it, it was like a, um, so you'd have a feature track, so something that he's featured on, and then the person who's representing that person, it's like what they think is his top ten songs. So what I would class as his top ten would be different to what you would class, and the same yeah. with like Usher and stuff. Me personally, I can't ever see Usher beating Chris Brown, but I can see Chris Brown giving him a very strong run for his money. But to do that, you'd have to know Usher's music, other yeah. than what's just up on on TV wow. and stuff. Yeah, like I've always said to people, I pick Confessions Part One over Part Two any day of the week. Yeah, I'm picking at any day of the week, and no one can tell me different. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, all right, favorite cartoon to go and watch. If you could pick any cartoon from it from your childhood up to now, what would you go watch? Rick and Morty. But there's also a 1990s yes. Spider Man that's on Disney Plus that I've started re watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am loving this right now. This is like this is what I want to hear. That honestly was probably the best Spider Man series that I'd ever watched. Yeah, ever. Like, best. I would probably almost watch that. Above Power Rangers, but yeah, you know, I would. I'd possibly, quite to possibly. Power Rangers, Power Rangers is like, yeah, but to think of Power Rangers when you're younger, it was more just like it was on, and when it's on, you watch it. There yeah. wasn't like a series build up where you could be like, blah, 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 blah. but in Spider Man, it'd be like next week he's gonna fight Doc Ock, and he might, lose. yes, it's true because <laughs> he true. just got beat up it's... and they nearly took off his mask and it's about to go down. But then you'd watch Power Rangers, they'd always win, whatever, and then... I didn't, then yeah, I didn't know, at the end of the day. <laughs> and then next, next week, there's like brown Power Man, and then there's, there's blue, and there's baby blue, and then there's black, and then there's yellow, and it's like, like it's all a bit... 
I think for me, that was one of the one things that used to get on my nerves. Like they would get their asses handed to them. <laughs> Two episodes later, they're back on top with new yeah. everything. And yeah. it's like... Robot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, new robot. Cool, <laughs> that's it. This, this robot's the best one that's ever been made. It's yeah. so powerful. It took Nothing us two days. Touch it. Yeah, literally. All, all of that. Like, uh, Why don't you just right. use this before, man? What's wrong with you? Bam. So you, you couldn't tell me that we had this here in, in, in storage just waiting. So you let our old zords get destroyed first to bring out this thing. All right, cool. For real. I see how you're moving, big man. Hey boy, it's the blue, same blue thing as, head, I see you. it's sort of the same thing as um, Avengers. Because people say, like, the critics say the same thing, you know. They didn't win because of Captain Marvel, even though she was strong. They didn't exactly win because of her. It was still the same Honestly, people that got absolutely twatted. <laughs> that's the yeah, I mean, it was the way they approached whole... her. That's that's a whole yeah, that's number. a whole another that's <laughs> if if, if, if we go into that, that time. this interview will be going on till twelve yeah. o'clock because trust me that particular like scenario I watch like all the um I don't know if you guys do so you have people who like specifically upload videos with um like information about the movies before they come out. So I was watching one and they were like, Yeah, Captain Marvel is the strongest superhero that we've ever introduced. And I'm like Okay, if the person doesn't read this properly, they're basically you're basically saying that she's the strongest person overall, which is not the case. Mm. Thor is a god. He ain't getting beat just so. But this Thor that you guys have putting out are putting out here is severely depowered compared to the comics. But Thor, okay. Thor is my guy. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but um, even the Hulk, the Hulk can go like. Like when he was on the Hulk planet, all sorts like it's the next level. They're different levels. See how it beat? It didn't. It didn't beat the crap out of the Hulk in um, Ragnarok. Yeah, he did. He did yeah, the, I, well, he he he, he was about to. Yeah, he yeah, was too. About to, And then the Grandmaster <laughs> wanted to use his little toy thingy to just you know destroy him, yeah. destroy stuff. But um, listen, Leon. Honestly, thank you so much for coming on. It's been amazing. This is this is great. It's been informative. It's been a nice little easy vibe this afternoon or this evening, I should say. Um, hopefully, once everything's like locked off and everyone's able to, you know, move around and stuff, we can get you in and we'll do one properly on on video and stuff. So yeah, definitely. yeah man. Just yeah, well. like I said, thanks again for for coming on and whatever the next direction is for you with everything else. Stay safe, stay active, yeah, and you guys, uh, and you guys. Thanks oh, yeah, pure, pure socials as well. Like, pure socials so people can follow you at the end um, of it. Just Leon Reed, really, you because I got the ticks in it, so I got the blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, official, guys. <laughs> he's got the blue ticks. Well, yeah, so um, guys, at the bottom of this video, comment um, who you would like us to interview next. Um, we'll get in touch with them and we'll try and make it happen. Also, follow me at DJ Armani One. Yeah, cool.